In this episode of how to build a billion dollar startup almost overnight, I'm gonna look at it from a different perspective. I know I've given you charts and graphs and we looked at the acceleration of different markets, but today we're gonna to look at a different kind of acceleration, speed. And uh, a lot of companies talk about uh, you know speed of development or coming out with uh, different types of uh, products in, in the most efficient way, in the quickest way possible. But I'm gonna actually expand on that because I'm a big, big fan of uh, incorporating speed into every process of your business, whether you're a startup or Fortune 500. In fact, one of the articles I read a couple of months ago, I, I keep these articles, but then I can't remember who quoted it. I do remember that it was the CEO of IBM, and what she quoted was like, IBM needs to just, after layoffs, they just need to do things faster. Well, just telling me to do things faster is not gonna do it. And, and there's a whole series I'm doing on War Speed Startup that discusses how to do time compression in every function of the business. But today I'm gonna to look at it from a marketing perspective. So once again, uh, I'm not gonna deny you, but we're gonna do the graph again. And uh, it's gonna be uh, YX. So let's say this is a market X. And Y is of course the size of the market. And we talked about the different types of curves that can play in a market, especially if it's a new category or new product. And uh, you know, you have to determine, for instance, where you are in within this growth curve. So if it's smartphones or if it's uh, like with, I talked about casual dining that Chipotle has uh, become a major player in, then you have to know if you're going to be in this market to, uh, to compete or tablets, any market. One of the things that you can do is you can look at this from a completely different perspective and the perspective of speed. I don't care what the market is. In fact, I don't even care where you're at in the curve. This is one of those cool things that it's completely, to me, almost irrelevant where you're at in the curve. What category? That's an, uh, somewhat of an insane statement, but I'm going to prove to you why it is. Usually companies obviously crank out new products, and of course if you look at the growth of any high flyer in any sector, you're going to see a trend that the companies are just cranking out new products and based on the new products, new growth and revenue and all that comes into play. So you can look at a product cycle as just like a curve. And so I'm drawing you this curve, these little curves, and think of them as product cycles that you're coming out with. Okay, so you've got, this was maybe product one and then you either developed a new version of the product, so it became a derivative, well, I can calculus product two, product three, and then maybe you stopped doing product three and you came out with a new product called new product one. And then what you could do is if, if this, uh, if this line of products is uh, finally kind of met its course, within the overall category. So you could say, let's say it's a smartphone sector and you could track the movement of Apple with their product, smartphone product, and now they're gonna shift to Battlefront and you know they're coming out with still iPhone products, but now they're gonna come out with a smartwatch. So now S1. One of the things that you can do is if you're operating within the category, whatever that category is, and it doesn't really matter where the category growth is, whether it's here or here, or maybe it's even on decline, uh, is that you can utilize elements of speed in various functions or processes of the business. And so if you're able to create products quickly, from concept to launch and crank them out really quick. So instead of taking two, week, two years to develop a product, it takes you a year. Or, or if it takes you a year to develop a product, you do time compression techniques on the innovation side, the development side, the, the order to delivery side, all those different components. If you compress that and now you're able to crank these products quicker, well that itself is a way to billion dollar riches because you may not be the innovator in a particular sector, but if you can produce products, if you can innovate, if you can crank out these new ideas faster than anybody else, then you have a couple of things coming into play. At a certain point, as the category is becoming 
uh, uh, let's say it's an emerging category and the category itself is becoming, uh, uh, is, is accelerating at a much rapid pace and it's, it's becoming pretty solid in terms of consumer needs and wants, you're going to look like an innovator. So what's going to happen is that you're going to be cranking these products out and you're going to be extracting revenues out of these small curves. So just like a category has its bell-shaped curve as an example, products do too. Products have life cycles. So you are able to, because you're using speed, you're able to extract uh, revenues much quicker than your competitors. Now, how do you do that? What do you do? I and mean, it's a book in itself. And uh, I'm doing a series uh, called Warp Speed Startup on that. But really what it comes down to is time compression. And when you look at time compression, there's quite a few different ways to look at it. First of all, one business process or one arena to look at is from concept to launch. So you got an idea. You've been thinking about it for a while. Well, I hope you're not thinking about it for too long because somebody else is probably trying to outthink you on this one. Not only are they trying to outthink you, they're trying to out-execute you. So what if they know some of the time compression techniques that I know? Well, then you got a problem. So concept to launch is uh, obviously one component of it. The second part of it is that you're gonna, if, if you develop, let's say you're developing the product and now you're thinking through the entire process of how do you do time compression in terms of order to delivery. All the logistics so that when you go live and you launch, you can streamline the entire process of ordering a product so that the consumer is uh, very happy about you delivering to them time. And then of course the third component is the whatever it is, whether it's raw materials to finished goods. Okay? This is the production component. The production component of time compression has been perfected by the Toyota uh, Corporation. So the Toyota production system that was invented by Taiichi Ono and Shigeo Shingo combined, they really focused on using different frameworks and methodologies of creating just-in-time production system that used time compression and, and also eliminate as much waste as possible in getting the product to you. And I'll expand on that in a second. The fourth uh, component uh, from my perspective is launch to diffusion. So one of the things that uh, I've seen startups and companies uh, kind of confuse the two is that just to get out into the marketplace first, okay, that's great, don't get me wrong, first mover advantage sometimes, not all the time, has its advantages, no pun intended, but bottom line is that if you are out in the marketplace but you have not figured out how the consumer should or how you can position your product and explain the values of value proposition of your product where the consumer not only thinks it's cool but they end up buying it okay then you may be able to get into the marketplace first but your diffusion techniques are maybe lacking knowledge, expertise, you name it, there's a lot of play, uh, variables that come into play and then you're not able to penetrate into the marketplace. So that's the fourth component and there are some time compression techniques that you can use when it comes to launch to diffusion as well uh, that are based on network theory. Uh, the fifth and uh, not last is the, uh, from my perspective, is concept uh, concept to finance and this actually is much more applicable to startups than fortune 1000 companies is uh, this is the one that I see a lot of problems with uh, you know we're you know you have a lot of uh, different uh, topics out there in terms of you know time compression in terms of speed uh, increasing speed in your business but in reality, concept to finance is something that's lacking because there's still a lot of inefficiencies 
for startup entrepreneurs when they have a great idea and it takes them nine months to get financed. Now, if you're in a large corporation, sometimes that's not a problem, but even corporations have to go through budgets and different components of it. Now, so if you're using time compression and you're able to develop products from concept to launch quicker, if, you're, if you have figured out how to streamline your process from order to delivery, if it's a analog product and you figured out how to produce the product much quicker than your competitors, if you have figured out some of the uh, components of once you're launched, how do you get it into the marketplace diffused, and then on this one, the concept to finance is basically if you got a concept, how do you finance it quickly? then what happens is you have an incredible advantage over your competitors. And so speed begets speed. So now you're faster. And so when you're going into the marketplace and your marketplace is accelerating and you're cranking out these versions of a product faster than your competitors, so this is you and you're really happy about it, Okay, and your competitor cycle is slower than your competitor unless your competitor has developed a revolutionary, unbelievable product, you're going to take him. And so, a couple of reasons. One, slow response, obviously. And two is you're extracting, here's the other thing, just for simple mathematics, it's all visual, I don't need you to know calculus. But if you've got these different product peaks, you're extracting more of the revenue out of this market than your competitor. So this is why I say that if you want to build a billion dollar startup almost overnight, focus on speed. Speed in every component of the business. And if you want to look at it from a different perspective, it does come down to production of your idea into reality. So what you have to look at is uh, in Toyota production system, uh, they have uh, two uh, simple concepts, order to, de to delivery. And they call it D. And then they have a concept, obviously, productions, uh, production cycle. We'll call it P. If your production cycle, we'll call this P0, P1. If your production cycle is longer than order to delivery cycle, you're in trouble. Because when you get that order, it's going to take you, if you get an order and the customer is expecting you to deliver it in 10 days, but you can produce it in 20, you got all kinds of problems coming into play. That means speed is not one of your key competitive weapons in building a billion dollar startup. If your production cycle of the whatever it is is substantially smaller than your order to delivery, then you can incorporate obviously the speed advantage to build a billion dollar startup. Now, in terms of what? When, uh, when if, you, if you ask me, like for instance, what could you apply this to? How about anything? So, in the old days, in the history, when it comes to uh, automobile industry, uh, Toyota production system is literally designed in such a way where the production cycle is very short, much shorter than the order to delivery. So, for instance, uh, Historically, it's been known that you, you could buy their car on Monday and have it delivered to you on Friday and uh, they make it after the order has come in. There's many reasons why they're able to do that. I'm not going to get into it, but bottom line is they incorporated speed as one of their key elements in building a competitive advantage on one end, but with the same token, they also incorporated speed to go through these product cycles much faster than other competitors. So, from a consumer perspective, if you don't know what the consumer wants, it's really easy to figure it out. Build a product in this market, build a product as quick as you can. So, let's say this is your first product and Wow, you scored, you were able to extract uh, revenues out of it. But then you came out with product two 
and you were you figured out that uh, you just didn't have it tweaked up rightly uh, right for the consumer so your revenues off of product two are not as high but then you learned and maybe you combined p1 plus p2 and then you came out with a much bigger idea a bigger product and now you captured a lot, lar a, a much substantially larger share uh, of the overall market with product three. And what I'm saying here is that because you use speed elements, you were able to, and this is time, you were able to decrease the time to market, which means that you were pushing this this way as the curve of the market was going up you are cranking out products fast so you are pushing the product uh, uh, value proposition closer to the curve which now gives you an opportunity to build bigger curves within the market itself and that's why speed is so important so this is a very simple way for you to think about building a billion dollar startup so any give me any product you know uh, there's a uh, there's a great uh, book called The Design of Everyday Things and it, uh, it, the author talks about like there's 28 different types of products in, in, in a house that you can look at improving from a design perspective. So one of the ways you can look at it is whatever product you see in front of you, figure out how long does it take to go through the entire process of making the producing the product and then what you can think about is like if this product, if it takes product X, let's say th uh, three months to make, what could I do? How could I design it? How could I increase the speed of the production of this product? How do I make it cool enough, quick enough, fast enough? How do I produce it in 24 hours? Now, if you're, if you're appealing to a consumer, whether they're actually a consumer from a consumer perspective or business, it doesn't matter, it's all relative is that if the mar your competition is a uh, promising delivery of two weeks and you can deliver it in one day and you have even if you, all the feature sets are exactly the same in fact we'll do that let's say you have you have uh, your product product A and it's a wonderful product and it's got feature one feature two, feature three, feature four, feature five. And then you have a competitor. And from a consumer perspective, believe me, even like the smartphone sector, a lot of the smartphones are starting to look from user experience pretty similar. Okay, and you have the same type of features, similar. Let's not say same, but let's say close. Now, if the production cycle for your competitor um, is let's say 30 days but my your production cycle is one day and you're both in the marketplace for happy customers who do you think the customer is going to buy? there you go speed don't forget very simple concept, but to be able to deliver speed in every function and process and every pro business process in your startup or growing business is not that easy. But the easiest way I can give you, if I can give you any advice on, on this component of how to build a billion dollar startup almost overnight, you should study Taichi Ono and Shigeo Shingo because what they focus on is obviously eliminating waste in every part of the business process but one of the things that you realize a derivative product of when you eliminate waste in every business process is that you're doing compression of all the value-added activities which means you're doing time compression which means you're increasing speed there you go